Hello and welcome. I'm Arumba. Thank you for joining me. This is episode 10 of Let's Play the Prince and the Thane mod for Crusader Kings 2. And uh, where we left off last, I was just turning this rather poor war that my brother declared into a successful war, because I'm awesome, and so are you. And um, we need a new plot. So one thing I was thinking about doing is, um, first off, we've got some, some people plotting, and I noticed that we don't have any kind of a... Uh, actually, we do have a prisoner. Who is your leash? Prince Godwin of England. Okay, not not us. So we need a prisoner to release to our people so that we can uh, make them all think that I am a wonderful leader. Let's see if we get the same bonus for releasing prisoners as in this mod as you would in a uh, in the other thing. So this guy is underneath one of my vassals. So if I release him, we should get opinion bonuses with everyone in our realm. Release prisoner plus, plus 10. So yeah, we're doing very well now. Take a look at this. The opinions across the board. We've still got one guy who hates me because I'm, you know, I'm terrible to him. Um, and I do still want you dead, by the way. Maybe we'll plot against him next. This guy from Northumberland. Northumberland. In fact, can we do anything to him? Cumberland. Nope, nope, nope. Okay. How about we just see if there's anything fun for us here? We can try to kidnap him. It's treason. Take revenge. Let's just try to kill him. We'll probably have plenty of supporters because so many people in the realm like me. I'm starting to get a lot of good modifiers, and we're also starting to build up the the long rain panel. Long rain bonus is probably getting. No, no, no. Never mind. I'm totally wrong. We have short rain minus eight. We're still quite quite a lot of short rain penalties, but it's getting better. And so let's rally our men, and let's also spend some money. Even though we're in the middle of an offensive war, I still want to spend money on upgrading things, because I like to do that. I think building structures is usually more important than hiring mercenaries. It's just more, more efficient in the long run. And actually, something I need to check is, can we get a retinue? Yes, we can. I'm glad I checked. It's very important you constantly check this retinue cap, because the stronger... Like, the, the later in the game you play and the higher your technology gets, the more of your levy gets converted into retinue. And if you fail to raise a retinue, essentially your army just keeps getting weaker and weaker and weaker. So you need to get a retinue. Um, now, as English, we have the simple longbow range. So our best cultural unit is going to be archers. So we're going to want to pick... The retinue that gives us the most archers possible. Holy crap, our retinue is expensive. Holy crap. Holy crap. That is so much money for a retinue. My gosh. But we're going to want archers, so we're going to need to save up some money for that. That is way more expensive than regular. I mean, it's just amazing. Cost to create retinue cap usage, 1500 Jeez, that's just brutal how expensive they are. Yeah, we're going to pretty much just go with either a 50-50 mix between this one and this one, or all this one, because archers are much stronger for us than anyone else. We'll disband the boats now that we're there. Uh, i got a few more boats coming around. Let's re-raise the army in Warwick, since apparently he's decided to stop coming here. And we can rally there now instead. And as soon as that boat gets here... Those last boats. Uh, my beloved wife, Ingrid, is constantly bored, keeps talking about the new fashion she's heard about. Now she wants me to introduce it at court. Apparently we're both going to gain s zealous. Vanity is a sin. Let's go to church. All right, cool. Well, I like, personally, I love having zealous because I like religious warfare, and zealous gives you a lot of piety. The Pope likes it. Um, you know, if you're going to attack somebody, you should do it for religious reasons, obviously. And apparently that... Got a few more people to like us better as well, picking up that trait, so we'll invite them as well. Let's see how the Pope's feeling about us now that we're zealous. Yeah, church view on zealous, plus 20. So, the church likes you to believe in God. For those of you who don't know, zealous is a, what would that be? An adjective that describes someone who has zeal. Zeal is a... Basically, someone um, who is very, very passionate about something. 
So it doesn't necessarily have to refer to religion, but generally it does. Uh, for instance, you could say somebody is a religious zealot, which would mean that they you know, are very full of zeal towards religion. And uh, it's kind of a cool word. Where I learned that word, for those of you who are interested, is, uh, let's send that guy. And I'm picking army advisors now. I want to have good people on top. This guy's a cavalry leader and a flanker, so he'd be great on the side. Let's take you. They don't always put the best possible people on top, so sometimes you got to kind of babysit it. And, um, yeah, that guy I just put on the left flank is not going to be that good. He doesn't have any modifiers. What we're looking for is people who have these extra little things here. This guy's an organ... Oh, I'm an organizer? Yeah, I'm a fantastic organizer. I'm good at leading the center. How is this guy? Unpredictable leader. So, let's check you out for a second. You would be good on any flank. Let's put you on the side. We'll put our marshal on the side and we'll put me in the center because I'm good at leading the center. This does make me likely to die because I'm maimed. But whatever, you know, I mean, we're going to make, I mean, look at these bonuses. We, we just can't pass them up. Mounted troops get plus 63% power. We're good at retreat. 42% <coughs> power for leading the center. Despite being maimed, we just have to do it. Plus, we have more men anyway. It's not a big deal. But it does look like we're crossing a river. Nope. See, I hate how rivers go right, right through counties. It's annoying. It's hard to tell. Okay, so let's watch this battle. I'm going to slow the game down and uh, actually take a look at the actual engagement because I want to learn a little bit more about how this mod changes things. So we'll look at our flanks. So the combat tactics, This is there's a lot of information here. Let me try to explain how it works. So it says at the bottom, the following tactics can be used by this flank. Botched harassment, 0.6%. Classic harassment, 1%. Impressive harassment, 07 So what's happening is Based on the composition of this flank, based on the men in this flank, different tactics get stronger weighting, like more weight to them, more likelihood to have happen. Also, based on your character's martial skill, it affects the likelihood of good events or good tactics versus bad tactics. So for instance, let's take a look at, um, say, this character here has 20 martial. Let's look at his likelihoods. So he has a chance of doing a botched harassment, classic harassment, impressive harassment, legendary harassment. Notice how those, those likelihoods are very small. It must be because the composition's not really ideal for those things. So let's look at the very, 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 very bottom. It says botched shield wall 8%, classic shield wall 19, impressive shield wall 26, and legendary 11. And if we compare that to, say, his opponent, who only has 8 martial, and look again at the very bottom, he can only do a botched shield wall, classic shield wall, or impressive shield wall. Because his marshal is lower, he doesn't even have the ability to do a legendary shield wall. And his likelihood of doing an impressive shield wall is much, much less than this guy with much higher marshal. On top of that, so not only do you have the likelihood of you doing a good tactic to consider, because he's got these combat modifiers, like experimentality, which is huge, can be really, really good. Let's see what he's actually getting. Damage bonus minus 10%. So unfortunately, with, with his experimentality combat modifier, every time he changes tactics, he is going to do damage somewhere between positive 180% and negative 180%. That's what the experimentality modifier does. It's just somewhere randomly between that huge range, because he He's experimenting, or whatever. Unfortunately, this phase, he has a negative 40.4% number. And so negative 40 plus 30 is negative 10.4. That's how he... So he's actually doing... This is why I hate the experimentality one. It's like one of the worst possible modifiers. Because what it does is, in fights where you would expect to win, sometimes you lose, which is stupid. And in fights where you would expect to win, sometimes you do so amazingly awesome that you're just like, wow, we crushed them. But who cares? You were going to win. Like, it, it doesn't matter. It, it, the only time it would actually do something positive for you is if you got somehow into a fight that you shouldn't be in and got really lucky, in which case you just had poor strategy in the first place. So, it, again, there's just... I, I don't like that modifier. But still, he's got other good traits. I mean, he, he's, he's done an impressive shield wall, so, you know, good job, buddy. The impressive shield wall itself, you'll notice, 
is the the thing at the top. It says light infantry attack plus 25%, light infantry defense plus 30%, uh, blah, 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 all those modifiers. And what I can tell about this mod that I like is that basically good martial commanders do better always. Where in Vanilla Crusader Kings 2, a good martial commander can still pick the tum just the complete wrong tactic and just like ruin your army. Where with this, you know, the worst modifiers on here are minus 10% for light cavalry defense, heavy cavalry defense, and horse archer defense. And they're not important in the skirmish phase anyway. Now we can take it a step further. We can see the actual flanks and see exactly how these men have been modified. So, take heavy, take this, this liege levy here, for example. Heavy infantry has heavy infantry attack plus 50%. That is made up of the impressive shield wall plus 25 our Saxon culture gives us plus 15, and then we have level 1 melee infantry, melee weapons in this county, the Shire of Leicester. This army here is just getting a bonus from the bows technology and 35% from the impressive shield wall. If we take a look at my men, let's take a look at, like, say, the light cavalry. I was expecting to see a modifier for mounted troops. Why didn't I see that? I'm expecting mounted troops plus 65%. 63.7. Why aren't we seeing it? Right there. That is a mounted man. He should have plus 63%. But he's, he doesn't. Interesting. Oh, well. Maybe light cavalry don't count? Maybe it's just heavy cavalry? I don't know. But anyway, I, I guess that's enough. We've looked at it for, like, what, 10 minutes? But... Anyway, we're doing fine now. We're in a position now where we've got more men. Let's let a couple days go by and let's see if this guy's damage bonus changes. So his next t his next tactic is in two days. So let's time time go. One day passes, and then we can see the actual losses from the previous day. So he actually lost more men than this guy did, even though he's got more men total. He's he's doing terrible so far, despite his good tactic selection. So he's going to change his tactic from impressive shield wall to what? He's done impressive shield wall again, apparently. As they charged through an open field towards the enemy lines, the enemy archers began to fire and plow and gather into the garner of death as brave and good and pure spirits as the world ever saw. The twilight of evening had begun to gather as a precursor of the midnight darkness that was to envelop an epic clash. Retreat, order the men to fall back, as it's not time to win or lose this battle just yet. Although many commanders will see this choice as Craven, I know better. I might gain Craven, 50% chance. Or I can say Glory. Victory is not yet ours. Charge at the enemy with full strength. Well, obviously, we've got twice as many men. Let's do that one. You were separated from your men in the chaos of battle and now find yourself in the midst of war. As you scan the field and try to rejoin your forces, you see Prince Magnus of Engloland break through the enemy ranks and charge you. I believe this is the heir. Nope, Prince Godwin's the heir. Um, I can say prepare to die or I can get out of here. Well, obviously, I have pretty, even despite my maimed trait, I'm pretty darn strong in the martial, 15 martial score. So let's fight him prepared to die. You turn to face Prince Magnus and he breaks his charge and flees. <laughs> you pursue but lose track of him. You pansy, get your, get your ass back here. That's right, coward. Run away. It's funny. Alright, come on. Let's see you pick a good tactic. Or let's see at least get a good damage modifier. Okay, so he's changed his tactic now to the impressive harassment and volley. What are these little colors mean. I can tell the more little things you have the better, but I don't know what the colors mean. Botched feint. So he actually takes penalties to his army because he did a bad feint because he's Oh, it's apparently it's Earl Tostig. We must have killed the other guy. Do I actually get that modifier yet? I really am disappointed to see that these light cavalry aren't getting that modifier. I know in Crusader regular Crusader Kings 2 the mounted troop modifier isn't working, or it isn't showing at least, so maybe it's just not showing. But we do have a 47% damage bonus for leading the center. Oh, and there it does say combat modifier boost to mounted troop, 71.2. Well, let's just check the numbers. Maybe I'm just not... Uh, 
I guess it sounds about right, maybe? I know it's not multiplicative, it's additive. Let's see if the math adds up. I believe, off the top of my head, light cavalry have an attack value in the pursuit phase of six, I think. So let's, let's see. Uh, we're getting 85% from harassment and volley tactic, plus sex and culture, plus cavalry melee weapons, which would take six up to maybe 11. And then if we got another not multiplicative, but additive bonus of 71% plus 47%. I don't know, maybe. Whatever. It doesn't really matter. Our army's strong because we've got good, good commanders. We're going to win this fight. That's all that really matters. Let's see, did your... Yeah, so his modifier changed. Now he's got the plus 35.6% instead. I've just crushed the center flank, and we're now in the pursuit phase. We're going to crush him. Fighting across the field, you see an enemy soldier. Let's go charge him. It's Earl Tostig. Let's kill him. Yes! Finally, we, we actually get one where they don't run from me. And I'm still maimed. So, you, <coughs> you and Earl Tostig of Essex slowly circle each other, tense and focused, as you scan him for any sign of weakness and any opening in his defense that you could possibly exploit. One mistake is all he'll get. You see a weak spot, a vulnerability. It's not much, but it's all you need. Strike. He tries to fight back, but you force your way through, easily overpowering his pathetic defense. You strike for his heart with all your might. Let's check him out. He's only got seven martial score. Bam! He dies! <laughs> That's so cool. I love this. This is way better than regular Crusader Kings 2, because you don't really get any events like this. He crumples to the ground, lifeless. You wipe your blood from your weapon. The deed is done. He is dead. 100 prestige. Cool. That's sweet. Fight is over. Um, and apparently we win what? Victory is mine. So, okay. Good military ruler no longer affecting us. Apparently we're a great one again. And uh, we basically spent this entire episode talking about numbers and stuff and one battle. But um, I have become Sir. I think I've already... Didn't that happen a while ago anyway? I don't understand. Is that like a modifier somewhere? Or... I don't get it. That makes sense to me. But um, anyway, I'm going to wrap this one up here. In the next episode, we're going to very quickly end, end this war. All we really need to do is just take back the, the, the things that they've sieged and then take Oxford, and we'll be able to wrap this war up. So thank you so much for watching. See you again in the next video.